So it would appear that I spent 49 minutes talking and uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I should have put a timer on that shit. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, try and get this first time going. I forgot to put compatibility mode on for the game, so I'm hoping that compatibility mode will help, so hey ho, let's hope. Um, I'll probably send some crash logs onto the Slivin support team and try and help them get me, try and help myself figure out what the issue is. It's possibly the internet security, actually. Possibly. Bloody vast internet security is a pain in the fucking ass, in all honesty. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. All our orders have been saved, so that was fantastic. I do really need that uh, gunboat quadrant there. Yes, good. Right. Bad. Good thing I put it on conservative attack. Wah. Wah. Okay. I lost 500 men, but they retreated. They had... Wow, they had more than twice my number. They had cannon, too. He's a 511. God damn. I'll take that. I'll take that any day. Well, that's really good. Poltava. Oh, there we go. The turn actually uh, concluded. Fantastic. The Soldiers of Infantry. That's an interesting name. The soldiers of Infantry. What's the weather like? The weather is... Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, it's so bad. Harsh weather. Harsh weather for all. Uh. Are you not an army? I could make you a core under somebody. Probably better off just making you a core, to be honest. Uh, we do have 490 rail transportation points, so that's fantastic. I'm going to send these men down here, actually, make them a core under this uh, front. Okay, so we'll send you via rail. Uh, that took a decent amount, but not that much. Yeah, they... Uh... How many men do you actually have in this army? Like, actual men. 16,000... But you're mostly artillery, etc. You're not active yet. Not active, not active. You're active, but there's no point sending you there. Did you actually bombard? Right, Germany succeeded in retreat from the Battle of Potava. We won a battle against Germany in Potava. Through reconnaissance flights over here, 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 here. Wow, lots of flights. Uh, Germany succeeded in retreat from Kharkov. Good, so we're taking Kharkov. That's not mine. Interesting. Ukraine Soviet Republic. Hmm. I do need them to take that so they could hurry up. That'd be fantastic. Okay. How long do we have supplies to last? We're 100% on our supplies. I'm going to combine you over here, actually. 13 days. Fucking hell. Uh, 72 in there. I'm not going to send you at them yet. So I'm going to have you just wait. So you're gaining uh, 0.60 cohesion a day. Like that, you'd gain quite a lot, actually. Yeah, so I'm going to put them on defensive. They'll gain 1.26 cohesion a day, and uh, they won't do anything stupid. Oh! Oh, our Ukrainian uh, uprising has begun! Oh my god, that's a lot of them. But I can cross via rail. I can cross via rail. Trotsky! You son of a bitch! I need you. Right, so we have a decent amount of force over here. But this is very important. We have military control of the area. Therefore, we can cross the river via rail. We do not need to cross the river and assault it. Yes! Oh, I'm so happy. Wow, I have a lot of forces over here, actually. Uh, I'm guessing this is the trains. Oh, these trains cost absolutely zero, but they give you a lot of uh, firepower, actually. It's like having, like, um, eight guns for free. Uh, we have some political commissars. Uh, yes, Gumrad. 
I need somebody who's active. A 4 2 free? A 4 2 free, you say? Seriously, though, somebody active would be absolutely just fantastic at this point. No? No, okay. Ah. Melons. I need to give you divisional command. Why can't you have divisional command, you son of a bitch? Now you'd be open to his command. Um, how much are we over by? Hmm. Independent cavalry brigade. That's a Rabia, third frontier. Okay, I'm gonna remove these. Right, there we go. Bang on. And the grime is gone. Okay. Hello. Why are you so good? Insurrectionist fighting skills are strong morale. Uh, you are elite infantry. You are our elite fusiliers. Very interesting. Okay, so you can basically command my fusiliers. You can have the rest. Okay. How are we doing on command points now? Well, apparently we have a lot more, perhaps? Yeah. That worked out fantastic. Right, so we have 57,000 men in this force. This is a hell of a lot of men. What do we have here? Insurrectionist and strong morale as well. Oh. Oh. Very nice. I was hoping I could give it to him. I can, actually, if I uh, do some sneaky, sneaky stuff. Okay, so uh, you can have these fuse of the ears. Oh, damn it. Hmm. I think I selected the wrong guy, didn't I? No? Yes. Perhaps. Okay, let's sort this out. Um, partisan, brave, and very fast rider. Okay, so you'll have that, 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 that. Just that? Okay. Um, you will have that first. That, that, that. 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 Okay. Any... Any of us? No? Fine. That'll do me. That'll do me. So in that way, both our commanders here, their men all benefit from strong morale. So they gain uh, 5 cent, well, 5 maximum cohesion. So let's take a look at the average fusilier over here. Uh, cohesion, cohesion. Uh, cent 1 out of 96. Uh, let's take a look at the fusiliers over here. Uh, cent 1 out of 75. Unless those fusiliers over here are better, I don't know. Right, we'll head via rail. Be there in a day. I need to just stream forces across here. Four days. Can't move there by a rail. Shit. Okay. But we do have our forces over here. Apparently they can't bombard. Why? If you can't bombard over this, its gun range is too short or it's not an offensive posture. It's because it only has the goddamn forces. Though we do have some um, Ukrainian ships in the area, some gunboats over here, so we can engage them. Yeah, we'll go for naval interception then. That's good for me. That'll do. Okay. Right, let's keep checking the log then. No, that's it on... Oh, no. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Ah, we succeeded against the enemy. We gained our uh, 20... Can, well, 20 engagement points there. Chernogov. Ah, that's because we technically control Kiev. Oh, my God, we actually do control Kiev. Or do we? Is this inside Kiev? Yes, inside Kiev. Fantastic. 
So we have um, 8,120 Ukrainians fighting for the revolution. That is just good. That is great, though. That is honestly just superb. The fact that we are already inside um, the city of Ukraine is more than important. I want them to hold, yes. I'm not seeing any more Ukrainian militias over here. Uh, I still can't enter this yet. Though I am going to keep this force around here, just in case. I could have it sent down there, but... Uh, only 12 days, that's a uh, that's really good movement. That's really good, actually. Well done. Is the rest, well, insurrectionist. Okay. You have some artillery. They both have artillery, so I might as well just give somebody command of the planes. There we go. 12 days. That's fantastic. Hmm, then Novgorod Garrison. Probably the most strange things, I mean. <laughs> sure, why not? I mean, yeah. Okay. I really wish that was active. First air group. Hmm. Right, the Hungarian volunteers are active. Okay, the Hungarian volunteers will be able to move out then. Ukraine is really where the battle is going to be. Okay, let's take a look at the... Log over here. Right, we rejected the um, ultimatum. General war has started. Our objectives to capture Kiev in six months, which we've already done because of the um, strong uprising, and we need to hold it. Um. Okay. Hmm. Capture of Kiev has boosted Ukrainian recruitment. Infantry divisions in Ukrainian in Kiev, Russia plus. Oh, that's interesting then. Um, hmm. Interesting. So we're at 136 national morale. So we gained 21 national morale that turn. Right. Interesting. Bolshevik morale decreased to balance the game, but engagement points and victory points received to compensate. Uh, reinforcements have arrived from Siberia. The Siberians. That's uh, a lot of men, actually. Very interesting. Yeah, let's take a look on just the normal mode, actually. There we go. They have a long way to go. So I might as well wait until they have rail to carry them. It's good that we do have some reinforcements though. How has that affected um, our strengths? Oh, Germany just got stronger. Ah, oh, brilliant. Okay. So we've lost 300 men, but Germany's lost 200. Light, light losses. Force listing. Let's take a look here. Power value. So that's our strongest army, apparently. Very interesting. Can we see by size? Yes, a number of elements. 113 elements there. I need to use this a hell of a lot more often. It's really good, actually. Cohesion. So we're lowish on cohesion, general supply, ammunition. Self-sufficiency. Uh, so does that mean that we could last perhaps a few turns? 
Hmm. Okay. Right. Germany captured Germany captured Kharkov. While taking Kharkov, we managed to capture 326 supply carts and 98 crates of ammunition. So we did capture Kharkov. Ah, are these Ukrainian? Right, so this is the Kharkov Soviet. So that's uh, that's what happened. We had an uprising over here as well, and we captured Kharkov. You gain control of Kharkov, uh, the depot, Kiev. Wow. Uh, uh, Belgorod, which is over here. Sweet. So he's been congratulated for his actions, he's gained some seniority. Right. So let's see then, do we have any options? Okay. Hmm. need to keep on top of this. Okay. Mobilize. Uh, Turkestan army sends reinforcements. So we could have um, elements move from uh, Turkmenistan into the theater. Right, Siberian army sends reinforcements. I don't want to take too much from Siberia, considering the distance. Uh, degree partial well, uh, partial mobilization. This option will bring a variable amount of construction depending on your national morale. If it reaches 8 in national morale, 120 or more. At uh, the cost of increased discontent within the population. Hmm. So at 80, it's like 550 perhaps? Or is it a random? Okay, so I guess... Um, at like 120 plus national morale, we have a higher chance of getting the higher amounts of uh, men. Uh, so we could fortify Murmansk. This option will create a new fort in the harbour of Murmansk with its garrison. Fortify Arkhangelsk. Or Arkhangelsk. Mind the Kronstadt approach. Hmm. Include prisoners. Call the workers to join the army. This option calls the urban workers and the party members to join the Red Army. It will improve the morale and organization of the Red Army, increasing after all the political mili well, all the uh, number of military police and political units. It also has a big political cost. It's the local urban Soviets will lose many historical active revolutionaries in the front and let the political management to the new bureaucrats in the rears. This option can only be activated ten times. So we gain one national morale, three conscripts, and in the unit pool we gain five check, uh, so basically political officers. International volunteers, delay anti cossack policies. Hmm. Gain one Cossack d division in Novodaskarsk. Novodaskarsk? I don't know. Sign an alliance with the Ukrainian anarchists. Very interesting. Ah, okay. Sign an alliance with the Ukrainian anarchists. This option will allow the rest to control the main forces of the Ukrainian anarchists and the warlord. Hmm. Right, we'd lose our 10 engagement points. So they're very much uh, opposed to the Bolshevik, well, they're very much opposed to Bolshevism. Bolshevism. Right. Hmm. So. Uh, Right, so Ukrainian nationalists are Greens attack the rebel base in Novorodessa and Lopul. Do I want to stand an alliance with the Ukrainian anarchists?
Nova Rodassa. Where's Nova Rodassa? We have a Dasa over here. Now, the Anarchists aren't very strong. I'm not seeing any more Anarchists. Am I actually at war with these? I don't think I am. Declaration of war on the Romanians, so basically Romanian, was Finnish, the Baltic states. Uh, declaration of war on Transcaucasus. Uh, um, the uh, Transcaucasus League. If war is declared, the Caucasus will be an open field, so a war with the Caucasus nations will start. Red uprisings take place in Baku during this May, triggered a Turkish counter strike. A Turkish uh, counter strike. <laughs> If the war is not declared, the Caucasus states will remain off limits and steadily reinforced with risks that our enemies involve them in the war. Ah. That's really interesting, actually. So, the mechanic here is then that if we do not declare war on these states, they will basically be recognized as de facto independence and uh, they will perhaps be coerced into joining the, Ru well, the Germans, the Central Powers. I am going to declare war on the Transcaucasus. I think. Yes, there we go. I'm going to declare war on the Transcaucasus regions. I do want to do that because I want to lock down this theatre. Even at the risk of Turkish reprisal. If they do decide to uh, declare war, depending on how things go and whether I can push through uh, Resium into Ankara, through Anatolia into Constantinople, it would give us a great strategic point to attack from. I mean, it opened up Romania, Bulgaria, the underbelly of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Which would be quite interesting. So we are going to declare war on Transcausia, the Transcausian Liga. Uh, what forces do I have in the north? I have a lot of forces in the north. Active too. Hmm. Drunk. Not good. Not good at all. He's an ex-imperial officer, but the minus four command points is really annoying. Who's the main commander over here? The lost lot. The sever lot. There we go. I really need to read the manual actually and figure out what all the politics do. That's my homework. Okay, insurrection is fighting and strong brow. So you have an elite unit of fusiliers. It's fantastic that just one elite um, regiment, one elite group will basically benefit the entire elements. It's just fantastic, the entirety of the core. Ah. So we've some military police over here. Very interesting. Strong morale. So these are basically Czechist line units. So they're basically military police. Very interesting. Karelian artillery and howitzers. It's a very formidable army. Very formidable. Not much in the way of supply, though, so I could do with building more supply. Ah, Chankas. Red Railroad Engineers. Not entirely sure what they do. Perhaps they allow us to fix any uh, problems. I would like to recruit more Commissars, actually. They are pretty good. The fact that they gave you the plus three command is just exceptionally valuable. Right supply. Hmm. Observation balloons would be nice. Uh, supply terrain. Ch -ch 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 speed coefficient is a hundred. Let's compare that to the um, logistics over here and let's see if these guys are actually any faster. Hundred and thirty. They are faster as well because they're trucks. Now why don't I get any trucks? That's annoying. But I could do with uh, supplies. Hmm. The best way to invade Finland would obviously be this way. 
I would like to invade Finland for the fact it would also narrow the front. Which is important, actually. As well as giving us access to a lot of naval bases. And uh, key things like this, the railroad workshop. Hmm. Do I know the strength of Finland? No. I reckon I could beat Finland, though. The North Front. Right, so Petrograd is very well defended. Hmm. You could be made into an army commander, I'm sure. Swap generals. Oh my god, why does... Yeah, why does that... Oh, I really wish uh, the other games had that. Right, so we have some more logistics over here. Hmm. How many men do we actually have in this force? We have 16,000 men, not really that much. Hmm. Okay. Right. So let's go back to our options. We'll go back to our diplomatic affairs. So we can declare war on the Finns. If war is declared, Finland would be an open future war with this nation, blah, blah, blah. Uh, doing nothing. Hmm. It would cost us two national miles per year. Hmm. So it's basically urging us to declare war on our former lands, isn't it? Hmm. I reckon about uh, 2,000 plus strength would be more than enough to take over Finland. It's just the bloody loot that we'd have to take. I'm gonna say- What?! Did that say 3,000 days?! What?! What?! Bugger off! <clears throat> Fuck you, 3,000 days, cheeky bastard. What they gonna do? Roll there. Keep 3,000 days, my ass. Okay, I think I'll declare war on Finland next turn, actually. I'm gonna make you into a call. Not really much point to make you in call. Right, so you're at Grand Headquarters. What do you actually bring to the table? You don't have any Grand Headquarters specific traits, which is a shame. And you're only a 1 1, so you don't really give us anything. Ah, uh, okay. You, on the other hand. You are better. Right. Oh, we can actually see the uh, Grand Headquarters. Yeah, here we go. Uh, possibly not the best colour to have it in red. So, there we go. So that's the uh, command range of the Grand Headquarters. Quite large, quite large. Yeah, so we'll have to declare war on the uh, Finns probably even following terms. If I can deal with the Finns, I can uh, use all my resources. And, yeah, so I want to deal with this front, I want to deal with this front. If we can concentrate all our men over here, we can try and overwhelm the German forces. Uh, I'm going to build some supplies here. I'm going to need a lot of them. Okay, Chichankas are really nice though. Okay. 1920s infantry, Cossack infantry, Marines. Ah, so these are, uh, yeah. Czechist line units. Another Czechist. I wish I could sort by strength, really. 
190. I would appear to be our strongest group of infantry. Which I can see why they're the uh, largest. Let's take a look then. So you have 105mm guns. You also have... Uh, are these mortars? Kinda. They're just basically light artillery. You have a cavalry element. Right. So, with this formation of fusiliers, we gain uh, two 76mm uh, guns. Uh, we lose one group of infantry. Well, with this, we uh, only have two groups of the 105mm guns. We lose two groups of artillery. It's only 76mm artillery, though, so it's not exactly fantastic. Um, but we gain infantry and we gain cavalry. So that's interesting. Let's take a look. 10 offensive fire, 20 defensive fire. Let's take a look at what the uh, 76s are like. 612. Compare that to you, uh, Cavalry 911. Huh. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, Infantry 1119. Hmm, so we're getting a few thousand men over here. I'm gonna go with the infantry like that. So I'll have two more built over here. Build some more supplies. Uh, the medical would be great. Lie, can't afford it, can I? Can I afford it? Yeah, I can afford it. Uh, some political commissars. Junkers. Okay, so I could do with some more guns. Oh, I could build destroyers. Is that the biggest I can build? Yeah. Tanks. Red tanks. Tank, tank, tanks. Slightly different tanks. Disruptor, arm support, and fire support. So. Right. These guys are better on the offensive. These guys are better on the defensive. Kinda. A little bit better. 120 supply, 220 ammunition. Okay. So these ones are heavier, they do obviously way more so. They take up more transportation room. Ah, but these are faster. These are faster tanks. So, uh, we basically have to decide do we want uh, tanks that are better on the offensive, but they're not as fast? Slightly worse at defense, but well. Hmm. Do they have the same uh, abilities? They do. Hmm. Position batteries. Interesting. Uh, basically just uh, garrisons. War supply 15, 10 war supply. So these are fairly cheap. How much war supply do I gain? Where's my war supply? Only 57 per turn. So I reckon we should probably invest in the faster and cheaper red tanks. Alright, so we'll build some tanks down here. There we go. Most artillery, siege artillery, 155mm is our largest artillery. Armour trains. Hmm. Now, armor trains are fantastic for the fact that they're supply elements as well. Yeah, huge quantity of supplies and ammunitions. I think we kind of really need to focus on trains as well. 20 war supply. God damn, they are very costly. I'll build um, some more heavy armor trains. They bring a lot of firepower to the table as well. Like 1420 firepower. Uh, they are siege experts as well, so that's really good for us. Well, these guys are mass logicians. They reduce the whole stack consumption of supplies considerably. So it's a trade-off uh, between having trains that are more in the way of helping you fight. So basically, heavy trains allow for a siege. 
where there's light on the terrain to help overall with the supply situation, which is what they're meant for. It's not much. It's about a 12 uh, combat strength trade-off. 15 war supply, 20 war supply. Hmm. But it does help with the 20% uh, reduction in whole stack. So that's probably more. That's uh, that's probably a lot better actually. I'm going to go with light armor trains just for the fact um, their main role is not a frontline combat unit. Their role is to supply my forces, and if I can reduce the supply uh, consumption of my forces by 20%, that's going to be incredible. That's going to be so fucking useful. So we're going to build some armored trains. Build another. Okay. Strategic pack. I find it... This is interesting, because I'm not entirely sure how to use these. I really don't quite get this system. <laughs> In all honesty. It's, uh... It's really just confusing to me. I have no idea what I'm actually doing here. Subversion. I mean, it's fantastic because you can do everything all from the same screen over here, but it's like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Repression. Like, what the hell does it cost me? Requisition. Huh. Conscription. Subversion. We'll go for subversion. Hmm. Let's go for conscription then. Ah, right, okay. Minus one engagement points, two national morale, gain some loyalty, okay. Uh, I get uh, war supply that way as well. Okay. Costs uh, minus two engagement points and we gain loyalty. Okay, so in the rear areas, we can go for the requisition. So, it costs us some loyalty, but uh, in this area here, we have about 73 loyalty. So, 57. So, loyalty is the highest in this center. We do have a lot of areas that are very low on loyalty, though. Okay. Not here. Right, so we'll gain about uh, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 uh, rubles. Uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 war supply. That's, uh, that's not bad. Some loyalty. We'll be able to recover that loyalty in the future. Uh, the war supply will be very, very handy. Okay, so um, this will be the last turn of the session, I think. Lots of talking. Lots and lots and lots of talking. I apologize. But we're going to go and end the turn. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm hoping that we will be able to get those horses across the river to Kiev. I reckon we will be able to, due to the fact that we have military control, uh, which is perfect. It's just amazing. I absolutely adore that. Hopefully the game will not crash. That'd be brilliant. Oh! 
Those forces in Kiev now, they apparently have a Austro-Hungarian commander. That's interesting. It's really interesting though, this alternate scenario. I mean, playing in 1921, it's coming up to 1922. Lots of interesting things. I'm not entirely sure how long the actual scenario is. Probably long enough, considering uh, we have a lot to do. Right, let's see how things go then. I mean, we are sending our largest army into Kiev. Straight across the river. Here we- yeah, okay, so that's a definitive victory. Okay. Right, so we can see in the uh, log at the bottom here. Some of the units of Germany are holding against all large red forces are trying to maneuver around the enemy. There's a lull in the battle. I could probably do with increasing the speed of battle. Uh, it's on medium at the moment. Okay. Yes, we can definitely take Kiev. And we can hold Kiev. Now, once Kiev, have, uh, Kiev has been secured for the glory of the Red Army, then where should we march next? That's a nice assault. I mean, we are definitely uh, doing a hell of a lot of damage. Fuck. That changed things. Right, um, German Ukrainian um, cores are being re uh, committed. Uh, Maramotov Corps has been committed. Germany is engaged in all reserves against the enemy. Some of the units of Germany are getting hold down to control odds. Shit, I had another 8,000 men. I forgot to put them on to sortie if reinforcements arrive. Uh, this is due to the fact that we're not fucking activated that we lose badly. I'm, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to win this. Hmm. Okay. More German forces. One of the Red Formation is retreating. Fuck, some of our men have retreated then. So Germany has thrown all of its um, men into the battle. It may be a victory, it may be a defeat. It's looking like it could be a victory at this rate, considering that we've not lost that many men. Hmm. A victory! Victory for the Reds! So we were facing off against a very good commander, a 522. So we lost in the end 7,000 men, they lost 15,000 men, 4,944 horses. So that was a definitive crushing victory for the Red Army. Uh, 30% combat bonus and two- oh. Wow. Is that from him? That's fantastic. 30% combat bonus and two extra protection to all partisans, that's ridiculously good. I doubt we had that many, but still. Right, so we captured 31, so we may have captured 3,100 uh, men. He captured one point of uh, war supply. Right, two of our elements were routed. We had 28% uh, trench effectiveness, they had 31. Yeah, so 17 elements of their men were routed. Okay. We have a small battle at Kharkov. Yeah, I have a feeling this battle is going to be a wash. Yep, that's a definitive victory. Completely wiped out with only 41 men lost. Fantastic. Okay. I apologize for the noise in the background. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh dear. 36,000 men of the German Reich. Wow. So we have an army of 71,000 ish. I don't know. Jesus. About 74,000 men over here. Armored cars. They have some tanks. Fuck. So 19 elements of uh, line infantry, possibly reserve. Hmm. So these may be reserve infantry. Yes. So 19 elements of reserve infantry, so we're going to factor in it something like maybe a thousand each of the 16 elements of line infantry. So there's a lot of men over here. Hmm. 
Stormtrooper. Mm, that's a powerful army. God. Right, I'm gonna have to watch out for that. And that was a 200% trench effectiveness. The fight's in the deep cold, though. So that's the 611, so he's very good on the strategic. 